Today's video is going to be a Pal World tips and tricks video. I have over 200 hours in the game. I really love it. I think it's super fun. There are a couple things that I wish that I would have known sooner whenever I started my playthrough. So that is what I want to talk about today. If your goal is to level up as fast as possible, spend your time exploring, capturing new pals, fighting bosses, and doing dungeons. If your main focus is to make your base look good, that's super awesome. You can play however you want, but if you're trying to level, that is not the way to do it. You need to be exploring, fighting, and capturing pals. You do get bonus XP for the first 10 of every single pal that you catch. If you haven't completed your first 10 captures of a pal, it will show you after capturing that pal in the bottom right. So you'll know how many you have left. So for example, if you have five land balls, make sure that you go out of your way to capture five additional land balls to finish out the first 10 so you get maximum XP. You also can refer to your pal deck and it will show you in the bottom right how many more you have. When you level up, you receive stat points that you can put into a variety of categories. You can put points into health, stamina, attack. You cannot put it into defense because the defense comes from your armor, your helmet, things like that. You can also put it into work speed or weight. In my opinion, the most important early game stats are weight and stamina. In the early game, you don't have a pal that you can ride or fly on to get you places faster. So most of the time you are running around, carrying things, bringing it back to your base all on foot. So weight and stamina go hand in hand. After you up your weight and your stamina, I think it's kind of free reign, whatever you feel like you want to do. Obviously attack can help you a lot, but you also are able to get pals that can increase your attack damage. Just pay attention to their passives. I think I put around six into work speed. Eventually I got around maybe eight, nine, 10 into my health. When I did my main playthrough, I stopped whenever I had around 800 carry weight. I didn't really see a need to have more because you can also add additional pals into your party to help you increase your weight more. If you're walking around and you see a little green statue, make sure you always go out of your way to collect them. These are Lift Monk effigies that you can use at the Statue of Power at your base to increase your capture rate. At the Statue of Power, you can also increase your pals by using pal souls. You can increase their maximum health, defense, attack, and work speed. The next thing I want to go over is how to pick your base spots. Your first base spot shouldn't be too stressful. Do not overthink it. In my opinion, you should wait until you find a flat surface. If there's a lot of hills, edges, mountainsides that are going to be included in your base, pals kind of have an issue with their AI pathing at the moment. So I would highly, highly recommend to just find somewhere that's flat. Most of the time, your first base is the one that you're focusing on upgrading. That's where you're going to be doing a lot of things. You're going to be going back and crafting things in order to leave and go explore more. Once you hit level 10, you can build a second base by placing a pal box in another location. Hitting level 15 will also unlock a third base. If you also want more than three bases, I do believe you can change that in the settings. From my experience, when you're picking your second base, I would highly recommend trying to find somewhere that has a lot of ore. Obviously, you could have that be your first base as well, but if you don't have it, just make sure that in the first two bases, you have an ore farm. Making a coal farm is also really good for late game. There are some spots that will have both or and coal or coal and refined quartz. There are also plenty of maps online that you can look up. Map Genie is a good one. It'll show you different mining spots if you're wondering where to put your bases. When you start the game, you are given a pal deck. This pal deck can show you all 111 pals in the game along with all the info needed about them. Each pal will show up in your pal deck once you have encountered them in the wild. When you click on a discovered pal, you can read a lot of their stats. You can read about their partner skills, what jobs they can help you with around the base, how much food they typically need to feel full, what loot they drop, and how many you have left to complete your capture bonus. Along with these stats, you can also click the Habitat tab and see where they spawn day and night. This helps tremendously when you can't quite remember where you found a certain pal. There are a lot of ways you can utilize breeding. You can make high value pals, even at a low level, make copies of a pal to use in a condenser or breed for specific passive abilities. The website I personally use is palworld.gg forward slash breeding dash calculator. With this website, you can select two parents and see what the outcome will be, as well as doing the reverse and just choosing which one you want to make. You can click on whatever pal you want to learn and it will have all of the combinations for you on the right hand side. You can choose the different pals that you have and see what they make. I would highly recommend breeding in Anubis as soon as you can. They have level four handiwork, level three mining, and level two transporting. They are the best to have in your base. 
These six combinations are, in my opinion, the easiest to achieve early game. As you explore, you're going to encounter merchants. You can talk to them and they have some good items in stock. My personal favorite is the witch hat, but they also sell a lot of really needed supplies for cake for breeding, um, different organs, venom glands, flame organs. You can actually capture these merchants as well and keep them in your base. If you utilize them as a worker in your base, you can still talk to them, trade with them, sell to them, all in the comfort of your own home. It's really good to also check the pal merchants. Don't sleep on them. Make sure that you are checking if they have any good passives like this dire howl does have good passives it's not necessarily the best to work in your base but you could use this as a breeding option as well to make sure that you breed good gold passives into future pals you could find a really good deal for a super useful pal at one of these pal merchants so definitely utilize them you can also sell unwanted pals for money in order to buy more things there are three specific settlements I want to point out right here underneath this red area. There is a small settlement up in the top right. Dune Shelter is also a settlement. And in the bottom left, Fisherman's Point also has merchants. They will always be here and sell the same things. And of course, the Black Marketeer spawns all over the map as well. This is another one that you can capture. And you'll just want to check and make sure that they have good passives. If they don't, that's all good. You can still sell some of your pals to him. Another side note is to always carry your gold with you because it does not count towards your carry weight. You never know when you might come across a merchant that you wanna buy things from. The first time that I built a base, I did my foundations like this. You can obviously see how it's sticking out of the ground. So I put some stairs here just to try and make it look better. But I ended up finding later in my playthrough that you can actually place the foundations inside the ground. When you're looking down, you'll only be able to have this one height. All you have to do is look forward until it snaps into the ground. You can put it as low as this, but obviously if you're building over grass, the grass is going to be sticking up. There are some flat spots that have a lot of flowers. So just keep that in mind whenever you're building, you might want to do something that's a little bit higher than that, just so that you can cover majority of it, but still easily walk on top of it. And of course, if you keep looking up, you will be able to place something higher. You can attach some stairs to it as well. But the biggest game changer to me was figuring out how to put my foundations in the ground. The ranch is a structure that you can have in your base to assign anyone with the farming skill that will graze around the ranch and they will drop items for you. I personally regret not using the ranch more at the beginning, especially whenever I found out about Vixies. Vixies are, in my opinion, the best early game pal to have in your ranch. The only place you can find Vixies is in this southern part of the map, this little strip of highlighted area. They have the dig here partner skill, which means that sometimes they dig up items from the ground when assigned to the ranch. This is probably five minutes of work in the ranch. They found gold coins, arrows, and pal spheres. It's super helpful if you have a box that's close to the ranch, if not just attached to the ranch, because anyone who has gathering will come and pick up everything in the ranch and put it in the closest box. Having chests next to a workstation really helps your transporters not spend as much time having to transport one thing from one side of your base all the way to another. Every single time I start a new playthrough, I am gonna be prioritizing getting maybe one to three Vixies and just putting them in my ranch so that I never have to make pal spheres, arrows, and they find me extra gold. For breeding, you will need a lot of cakes. You'll need flour, red berries, milk, eggs, and honey. For honey, I personally use beer guards in my ranch and they dropped a lot of honey. I am still using that honey to this day. They made a lot just in one day. And then of course, using the mazarina because they are sometimes producing milk when assigned to the ranch along with of course the chickens will be producing the eggs if you're wanting to assign someone to the ranch make sure that they have farming flambells will produce flame organs in the ranch cybelexes are really good late game because they produce high quality cloth and of course there are a couple who will also drop wool cremises drop wool lamb balls will drop wool and melpacas will drop wool if you don't know already, food will go bad in your inventory. There will be a timer that is running. Once the timer is up, it doesn't mean the entire stack will go bad. It just means that the one on top will spoil. You cannot use it anymore. So it will go from 10 to nine. If your timer is about to run out, but you don't need to eat it, all you have to do is click the sort button at the top. And if you notice, the timer will reset. 
This also will work in your feed box as well. If you see the timer is going down, just click sort and it will restart. One thing I didn't notice until a little too far into my playthrough was that when you are coming back and you have a lot of things in your inventory, you don't have to individually right click everything into your wooden chest. If you notice, I have a lot of materials in my inventory that match the materials in the chest. Push R to quick stack. It will quick stack anything from your inventory that is already in the chest on top of each other. Please don't be like me and not notice this until hours into your playthrough. Each element a pal has is going to have a counter, so it's really good to familiarize yourself with the chart that's provided. Let's say you're wanting to go up against a grass type. Well, you can bring fire. You can also bring fire against ice. Fire does really good against two elements. Grass is gonna beat ground. Ground is gonna beat electric, electric to water, so on and so forth. But in the same way that you can counter another pal's element, they can counter you. If they have the counter to whatever pal you are using, you will do less damage to them and they will do more damage to you. So be sure to take a screenshot of this chart and use it when you need it. These were just the tips that I wanted to talk about in this video. Obviously I could have gone a lot more in depth in certain areas. So if you do have questions, be sure to leave them in the comments. I am thinking about starting a series on my YouTube channel where I start a whole new solo playthrough on hard mode and it's gonna be a little let's play sort of like what people do with minecraft i think i want to do that for pal world so be sure to stay tuned